bear with me. I know it's been a long day, but it's the last talk. Uh, I just want to thank all the other speakers first um, for having a completely bullshit-free conference. These are pretty rare. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, other speakers. Um, it's really nice to hear about all these elegant solutions to, to real problems. You know, this kind of focus, I think, is, uh, is really important. But uh, I wanted to shift a little bit the perspective now. It's good, I think, that we're at the end of this conference to talk about sort of underlying message beyond the focusing on solution for real problems, which is what we do every day, but also uh, the idea of play and, ex and experimentation, and how important that is for the work that we do every day and how we in stay inspired to do our work and, and not burn out. So um, a couple of the things that I really just want to get across to you today. Um, I really believe that the ability to experiment and play quickly, um, just like we've seen with a lot of tools that have been presented here today, um, is what drives change in our industry and, and many others. Um, that change happens in very unpre unpredictable ways sometimes, and we really need to recognize that, even when we're struggling with the kind of projects that, that we work on. And above all, we really need to feed our creativity by publishing, just getting stuff out there. In whatever form it is, however ugly it is, however we, much we feel it needs to be polished up before we can show it to other people, especially when we're in the presence of, of great programmers like all of us are in the React community. Um, it's important just to get that stuff out there. So I'm hoping to encourage you to do that with the story about the React Native Playground, which I'm going to talk about today, and how the ripple effects that came from that project and some other things came back in unexpected ways that have kept me inspired to, to stay working on this very non-lucrative project. Um, it doesn't look like a slide, it belongs here, but it does. I'll explain why. This is 1996, my first web design. And I'll explain it's kind of a, an embarrassing thing that I'd forgotten completely about until recently. I'll explain a little bit more about why later, but uh, I'm no longer embarrassed by it, so I've gotten over that. Um, so instead of me explaining what the React Native Playground is, in case you haven't played with it yet, um, this is a great epiphany. And another great example of a ripple effect that I wasn't expecting was two days ago at the, uh, the F8 conference, there was an interview with Christopher Shadow here, uh, co-creator of React Native, and he is such an enthusiastic great person who I really admire. He explains what the playground is better than anyone and uh, I could. So this is a way. Uh, let's start over. And then the second thing I want to talk about is errandplay.org. So this is a way, if you've been doing like web development as JS Fido, so you can write your code on the website and then you can see the demo on, on the side. And they've done the same concept with uh, React Native. You can write your code on the web and then you, there's an emulator running in the cloud that lets you uh, tr try with things. And the best thing is you can send the link to someone and you can just open his browser on this phone or whatever. So you don't have to download it. anything to no, do that. No, and you get like a native app yeah. that you're looking at. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. It's crazy. This is crazy. I mean, this this is so great to see this because how many times do people say something's crazy? I mean, what you've done is crazy. It could be useful or really cool, but hey, this is crazy. And hearing that from this guy who basically ins inspired me to to start working with React Native and and actually has changed my career with. The demo that he did a year ago showing how you can quickly reload a native application, experiment and play with native apps for the first time. Um, it was really inspiring to see this. And that unexpected effect is going to keep me inspired working on this project, even when it's difficult to, to keep pushing through. Because inspiration is, is perishable. This is a quote from a, a guy I used to work for at Basecamp. And one of the most important lessons I learned there is just getting stuff out there and working on new projects and new ideas. It has to, to be go from an idea to an implementation as, as quickly as possible. Even if that idea burns out, it doesn't matter. The measure of success isn't 
that an idea succeeds and becomes popular, but that that you converted it from an idea into something. I think this is very true. This is really a tragedy when our ideas die away, and one of them could have been something great. So experimentation, play, and speed is what I want to talk about with the playground. So this is actually his idea. Uh, a year ago on IRC, he said, it should be super easy to ride to get JS Fiddle-like experience. And I thought, yeah, that should be super easy. It didn't turn out to be that easy, but you know, we had this idea that we should, now that we can load JavaScript, make a native app, and in the development environment for React Native, that JavaScript loads from a URL on your local machine. Why couldn't you load this from another server and load apps off of off of the web, wherever? You know, it's an idea that now is becoming a reality in in the industry. Uh, with just some random crazy idea that we had back then to load an app from the URL. But back then, how are we going to do that? Uh, we created a very simple React Native app that could read a QR code. It would get that URL from the code and download the React Native app, replace itself with the app that came from that site. And that was it. It's just this funny little thing that we were playing with, and it was just cool to just make that work. It wasn't a product. It wasn't designed to be anything useful for anybody. You know, but fast forward a couple months, and then four other people saw this thing and thought it was so cool that it was just possible to even do that on, and this is on, on you had to have a Mac, you had to have an iOS device at the time. It wasn't easy to experiment at all with React Native. And we got to the point where you can do something like this. This is a you know, web browser running an emulator and having a cross-platform game that you can, you can play with right there on the web. You can make changes here and see them updating instantly here. So this was amazing that we could get to this point in two months and all in just our free time based on this, this crazy idea. And here we can see an example of sort of Instagram filter type app where you make a change uh, here in the live editor. Uh, you'll be able to see that the app instantly reloads and all native, and you can mess around with it there. So the changes that you make here are updated instantly on the emulator. So the whole point when I was talking about this is not just that we built that, but how is it how did we get these emulators in there in the first place? It was only because this guy, Brent, guy on the right, uh, had this idea. He saw this this funky little platform, this this guy who built an built a product to to have emulators uh, for native apps that you could use on the web with like a video stream. He thought, well why don't we just ask these guys to give us Free emulators for React Native. Like, okay, well, it's very unlikely, and I would never have done something like that. But he said, yeah, just write them an email. See what they say? We wrote these guys an email, and they later said, oh, that would be great. We love you know, like React Native. Sounds like a cool project. And yeah, let's do it. So he just gave us an account, gave us free billing. And you know, this, this had another unexpected ripple effect, which led to the React Native documentation as of uh, tomorrow, hopefully, or Monday, uh, will have this emulator running for every single example of every component in React Native. Now we'll have an emulator free running there so you can mess around with it and see what the real behavior in a native app is. So, and actually, this is some project we, we started on. We only created one example and then uh, one of the React Native team came on and finished the work. So uh, we're really proud of this. I don't know what that does. So I just wanted to give a quick overview of uh, of sort of the, the architecture of, of this tool because it's, it is kind of also insane that it even works at all. Because um, one of the key features is that you can write code in the browser and have it update uh, instantly on the app. And the only way that works is because when you're developing a React Native app locally, uh, you have uh, what they call a packager, which is like a web pack type server that's running and will constantly be repackaging your, your code, your JavaScript code to serve into, into the native side. So what we did is just put that on a server and then let everyone's app run 
as though it was in development, but thousands of applications running under a single node instance per version of React Native. So this is completely insane because when you have enough of these apps up there, this is eight, like eight gigs, nine gigs of memory used by a single process, but I mean, who cares? It doesn't matter. It works. So, and it's been working for a year under the same principle, using one of these packages with no optimization, nothing. And it's actually gotten better because of other things that have happened on the side with uh, React Native supporting hot reloading and so on. Um, and all that happens there is that we, there's a file change washer that will see when, when you change a file in the file system, it will update the, the UI instantly. And that works even though we have all of these, these millions of files running on the system with a few tweaks. And actually the server is quite, uh, quite stable given the n number of applications that are running there. Uh, we have some name modules built into the app that's running on that on uh, appetize.io. And the, um, the way that works is we can pass in to app the appetize instance that's running uh, in the browser. We can pass in uh, some uh, JavaScript object, which gets converted on, on the native side to NS defaults on, uh, on iOS and intents on Android. And then these can be, we can parse out the URL for the JavaScript file and pull it down. So similar to the way that the, what they were explaining before uh, in the last talk about downloading a JavaScript in production, same concept here. Uh, so I didn't really want to talk too much about that. You can just go on to rnplay.org and mess around with it and let me know what you think. Um, so, well, there's a, I think there's a bright future for tools like this because we have uh, a lot of cool things we can do. Like one idea would be um, for every PR that comes into React Native with native changes, uh, we can test that PR in a separate individual build uh, on something like Playground. Uh, we have access to many devices, more than the, that's available here now. You can test on tablets, even on real devices, not just emulators. And again, this is something they're willing to sponsor for now. So we need to take advantage of this. And we also need help working on this. So that's at least the future of the React Native Playground. Um, and today we're announcing a beta for a product that we built on top of this, which is called Reploy, which is sort of a, a private RN play, which would allow you to test uh, and get feedback on applications that you're developing, but you know won't, don't want to put them up on a public site like RN play. So you can push up your entire app on here, and you can invite people to test it out and, and get feedback from them on um, screenshots directly from the application. So one of the problems we found that we had building um, React Native applications or applications in general is that people don't want to test apps. Even the people you're building the apps for don't test them. They don't install them on their phones. It's difficult to get them updated. The update process for apps is still quite cumbersome. So this is a way that you can just send them a URL and they can go on and test it out, take screenshots, get feedback. And this is turning out to be really useful for us. If you it will be useful for you, go ahead and sign up at uh, reploy.io. Um, I want to step back a little bit and, and talk again about these ripple effects. You know, I think something like the playground is only possible because of all the things that I had worked on over so many years going from being a computer hacker to uh, server management to Rails, backends, process, um, performance optimization to the front end now. All this stuff is what made it possible for me in the free time that I had to set up a server. I even have the idea to do this in the first place and make it work. And I think it's a really important lesson that sometimes when we're all over the place learning a lot of different things, we actually have a lot, can get a lot of value out of that. Unexpected value. Uh, and I think uh, this is another great example of publishing something so small that can have such a huge effect on the world. And I'm not going to, I'm not talking about my opinions of what, whether this is the right thing to happen or not, but uh, I wanted to ask how many people think they know how many times this package has been downloaded? I guess. How many? 
Okay, so 25 million times per month. But I don't know how there's not many lines of code, but the the point is that this guy published this tiny little thing, which didn't take very much of his time, but it had this huge ripple effect, which is which has provoked really important conversations about our industry. Like, have we forgot the code? What is copyright and trademark law really about related to open source? These are all really important questions provoked by a few lines of code. And anything that any of us publish can have these kinds of effects too. And sometimes in ways that are totally unexpected. This guy did not expect this to happen. And it can be really useful. You know, this is a, there was a really interesting post by Nathan Gontney a couple of days ago. Uh, I have to thank all these people for doing things two days ago that saved my talk. And uh, no, this is a really a good point. You know, something that's really important to remember. So I said I'd come back to this, and so it, this was my first web design for this hacker magazine, which you probably never heard of. And at the time, it was just you had to have a web presence. It was an important thing at the time, um, in a different way than it is now, as you know. But uh, I didn't know anything about this. I was a hacker. I thought the web was kind of garbage. What's the web for? It's quite happy. I was going to, I don't know, Photoshop, do some effects. And you know, I built this, and a couple, about a year later, then the whole site was changed and it disappeared into the past and in my memory as well. And then, uh, a couple, and while I was building the playground, I don't know if you've seen, has anyone seen this show? Really cool. Show. I'm not want to promote TV shows, but this one is really cool. So it talks about this whole history, that whole time in the 90s when hackers were like a thing. And this guy's a computer hacker. So I was watching the show, and there's a scene in the show where he's visiting, he's talking about his life back then and how he learned code, how he learned to hack, and how he learned to make, you know, to learn HTML. And he's viewing the source on the site that I built. So and I was like, fuck. <laughs> How does this, you know, how does this come back from there? You know, this is, this is crazy. You know, this is crazy. But it was there, and it just made me think, like, how's, how did that effect come from nowhere back to me through this, this medium? And that's another thing that inspired me to just keep working on the things that, you know, sometimes were pushing against me. So I really want to encourage you through all of this to just make things better. If you're not you don't have ideas, you don't have something you really want to build, there's many ways that you can contribute in the open source. I know this is kind of preaching to the choir, maybe, but I don't think so, because I think there's a big um, gap between producer and consumers today. We're so focused right now on our, our work and the things we're working on a daily basis, but there's, it's so important to just get these little, little drops of water in and see what the ripple effects are that, that come out of it. Um, I wanted to thank this team, uh, the React Native team, uh, React Native Playground team, who came together and uh, helped me build this. And uh, I want to just a blatant plug for these guys who we talk a lot about GraphQL and Relay and so on today. These guys have a uh, GraphQL database as a service, which we're using for this product, and we're going to be porting. They're also going to be sponsoring the Playground when we port it to Relay and GraphQL. Right now it's running with the Rails backend and we want to port it over so we can get some more community enthusiasm around that. And I just want to shout them out and thank them for, for offering to support that. Um, you can see the playground on rmplay.org. Uh, our product, Reploy, Reindex, and Appetize the, for the simulators. Uh, that's it, that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joshua. We have uh, time for a couple of questions, then we wrap up. Uh, anybody? Oh, hey, there's somebody at the back. Wait. Hi. Thanks for the, for your talk. And I want I just want to ask: Do you plan to add Windows emulator to your project? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. Do you plan to add Windows emulator. Windows. Uh, if if they add one, we'll add one, because we're pretty dependent on their service. And I imagine as Windows becomes 
more popular, they, they will add some in. So I don't know. We'll see. I don't even know where we would find one right now. So if you know about one, we'll, we'll add it in. Let's let's all thank Joshua. Thank you. Fantastic presentations. Thank you.